This is the Bronze Bow, chapters 8 through 14. Our characters, we're going to talk a little bit about Daniel. He um, is, the best word for it is, is disillusioned right now. He um, had put basically his faith in a literal false savior of Rosh. And Rosh is starting to um, prove to not be the perfect savior that Daniel is looking for, the perfect leader to follow. And um, so Daniel's just confused. And um, at the same time, we're watching Joel enter the phase that Daniel just left. Um, he is now following Rosh blindly and, and putting his hope in that as like Daniel kind of used to and is getting out of. And he is very successful at, you know, doing what he's supposed to do in this in this gang. And so um, it's kind of like a, a bit of a drug for him. You know, he's just, he doesn't even think about, excuse me, should I be doing this? He just thinks, I can do this, and does it, and then he's successful and, um, and continues to, to not make good choices, and he's getting himself in more and more trouble. Okay. Um, a theme is contrasting Rosh and Jesus throughout the book, and the quote is, Rosh looked at a man and saw a thing to be used, like a tool or a weapon, Jesus looked and saw a child of God. Actually, I think I need to end my quotes there. Um, but anyway, you know, so how do you view people in your life or how should people be viewed? You know, are they just to be used or are they to be loved and taught? And, and you know, how does that play itself out in different ways? Okay. Then in this part, the, the big theme is that um, Daniel is trying to basically find peace. And he feels like the bars of his cage are that he has to take care of his little sister, and he really just wants to break free and go back and live with Rosh. But then when he does go back up there occasionally, he's like, this is not freedom either. Okay, so he feels trapped. And that can happen sometimes. Okay. Um, we need to talk to somebody about blindly following orders um, because you will be held responsible for the actions of them, even, you know, legally. Um, I read a book once about a man who was, you know, trying to get in good with some some guys that were stealing stuff from a store and he drove the getaway car and just didn't even know really what was going on. Um, and these guys, you know, were not upstanding, God-fearing citizens. So then they blamed the whole thing, said he did it, and he ended up in prison for a long, long time. Um, you, you can't just say, well, I'm not responsible. I don't know what's going on. I don't know exactly what they're doing. I'm just doing what I was told, okay? Um, all right. So ignorance is not a good hiding place. You need to, to inform yourself and make your own godly decisions. Okay? Um, so these chapters are really playing out that freedom. Um, you know, Daniel wants freedom. What does he want freedom from? Um, it seems like he thinks he wants freedom from responsibilities. Uh, it seems like he wants freedom from the Romans. But if you were to really think hard about that, I don't think he would be really truly free with just those physical freedoms. Um, if his heart was still filled with this hatred and impulsive anger, even with the Romans not in charge and his sister, you know, married and doing great, he would still be in slavery to something. And so I want you to think about, well, what would he be in slavery to? And I think that the Bible says he would be in slavery to sin. 
and that the true freedom we need is for Christ to bring us to repentance from that slavery to sin so that we are he can change us and make us a new child of God in his kingdom and then we are free to serve him and to love um which is something that that Daniel is struggling with throughout this book you know so I want you to contrast spiritual freedom, what that looks like, and physical freedom, which is more important and more lasting, even if you think eternally on that one. Look through some scriptures and see what the Bible says about freedom. And then think about, you know, can in some senses a even a slave be free? Um, I recently read Uncle Tom's Cabin. And Uncle Tom is a type of Christ in there, and he's a slave at the same time. And but he um, is spiritually free throughout the book, um, spiritually worshiping and loving others. And um, it, it's a great example of how spiritual freedom is is much more important than physical freedom, but physical freedom's a, a big deal to you. Um, so anyways, you know, can you be a free person if you still have authority figures? I, I sure hope so, because I, I don't know anybody who doesn't have an authority figure. And if you look at it as God is the ultimate authority, and he is, none of us do. Um, so I want you to think about where true freedom is found and how free are you? Or how free are you spiritually, you know? And um, 